speaking in a fairly normal tone of voice right now, you probably can't hear a word I'm saying. These guys have been waiting 17 years to do this. Hey, shouldn't you be wearing a mask or something? You can't just be sitting out there with the... Alright, look, that is Mark from Bugman Education and Science Shows from 2016 pre-pandemic. This is Mark from Bugman Education and Science Shows from 2021, right in the middle of the pandemic. A lot of differences from before the pandemic to now. We're all doing things differently. One thing is we're doing virtual bug programs because we haven't been able to get out and show people bugs in person for over a year. Also, now everybody's wearing masks, and so look, we've got our special bug masks, and there's my praying mantis mask, right? Oh, and I can show you another difference between uh, before the pandemic and during the pandemic, because since it's just me and my imaginary friend here in the studio, I can take off my mask and show you the pandemic beard. If you're lucky, you get yourself a big science beard during the pandemic, right? And you get yourself some nice Einstein science hair, and you can show people bugs. <laughs> All right, now, one thing that's the same between 2016 and 2021 is they were both big, huge years in Ohio for periodical cicadas. Well, 2021 hasn't been one yet, but it's about to be. And so this show, we're going to tell you about the periodical cicadas and where they live and how long they live and why they live for as long as they do. Well, we'll talk, we'll talk about why they live for as long as they do, but nobody knows for sure. So we'll just kind of do some speculation about that. We're going to start off at the bug board. And so I'll see you over at the big bug board and we'll let this guy finish up whatever he's, I don't know. He's well, probably just about, yeah. All right. Oh, look, there's some of those cicadas now. The only place in the world you can find Magis cicada, the periodical cicadas, is in the eastern and midwestern United States, mostly in the northern, eastern, and midwestern United States. And they occur in groups in different areas on the same 17-year cycle, and each of those groups is called a brood. And now there are 15 broods that people recognize, although the three that are in the southern parts, this sort of pinkish color over here and this light blue color, those are on 13-year cycles. And so uh, in the warmer climates, it seems to be accelerated. And a brood isn't just one species of magic cicada, it's usually up to three species of magic cicada. So they're all on the same 17-year cycle. For example, uh, this is brood two, and it's up, you can see, it's up in uh, Connecticut, and up in some in New York, and Pennsylvania, up around on the East Coast, and then it doesn't all touch, but this comes up at the same time, right here. Those are all brood two. They last came up in 2013. So if you stood right here in New York and saw the 17-year cicadas in 2013, and then you just stood there for 17 years, they would come up again there, but not until then. And between the 17 year and 13 year ones, sometimes they're stragglers. There'll be 17 year ones that come out four years early. And there'll be 13 year ones that come out four years late. And then sometimes it's fewer or more years. And so the straggler, but most of the time it's within four years. And that is supposed to be part of how new broods evolved or the remnants of old broods that went extinct. Actually, when Marlet discovered these things, or first identified and labeled with Roman numerals all the different broods, he came up with 30 different broods. But most of those weren't seen year after year after year since the turn of the last century, and so they got wiped off the map. This year is brood 10, and in Ohio, brood 10 uh, is going to be over on the western part of Ohio, right? Actually, they're already there, and you can go out and see them now. There's four different broods that kind of make it into Ohio. Brood 5 is what's behind us. That was 2016. This was at Dillon State Park, which is sort of around the Zanesville area, east, central, eastern Ohio. And then this year is Brood X. This orange one over here is Brood 10, and they're just about to come up. 
And so if you go over to that part of Ohio, you'll already be able to see the nymphs coming up out of the ground. And I've seen some pictures on uh, Facebook and the internet of people with adults that have already emerged. Today is May 17th. And so there are some adults that have already emerged, but they didn't say where they were. And so different parts of their range, you might already see some adults. And then it takes a little while days before they start to actually start calling and when that happens wherever they're at whoever is there will know it one of my objectives for the spring of 2021 the spring of brood 10 is to pick up on a lot of the footage that i never got with any of the other cicada chances that i had and so this year i've got all my camera gear ready and i'm going to spend a lot of time out in the field shooting as much as i possibly can and i started off four or five days ago this was on may 12th at prairie oaks metro park which is on the west side of central ohio west of columbus and there's a lot of old growth trees there and this time of year if you're in the place where brood 10 is going to emerge for the for the last few weeks you've been able to see holes all over the ground little teeny tiny holes and if you look inside sometimes you'll see little cicadas and i saw this guy with his little cicada abdomen popping up and he was climbing up out of the hole and then finally he did come out of the hole and i could see the whole thing look you can see him right there you can also see those front legs those big muscular big moving parts on insects means and most things big moving parts mean strong muscles right and so these guys have big muscles on their front legs and big claws and those are called fossorial legs and they use them to dig with and these guys are obviously you look at it and it's like ooh, that's a digging thing and it's been down there for 17 years digging little tunnels and little cells places to protect itself from water and things you know from flooding and things like that and it's been attached to little root hairs and sucking on the xylem of the plant which is the part where they rush water and nutrients up to their leaves to do photosynthesis with not many nutrients lots of fluids and so the cicadas just grow on that and they grow real slowly because there's not a whole lot of stuff in there this one decided it wasn't <laughs> quite time to come out yet and he doubled back down into his hole but if you go out there you'll probably still be able to see them coming up and down right now uh, out in the holes very very exciting and then in a couple weeks they're going to be all over the place cicadas lay their eggs in tree they lay their eggs in the thin twig-like branches far away from the trunks of trees and they put their eggs just underneath the bark of those little thin twig-like branches in order to do this the female has a special tool that fits into a groove on her abdomen called an ovipositor O-V-I means egg, and positor is like to deposit, and she sticks that into the branch to lay her eggs. You'll notice on this video, this is not a periodical cicada. This is an annual cicada, or a dog day cicada. You can tell by its black eyes, and its body is not black. It's kind of greenish, and it's got green wings instead of orange wings. The periodical cicadas are smaller you could tell if you saw them together and they've got orange wings and red eyes and they're real obvious real dark body but they both lay their eggs the same way they stick their ovipositor which is like a shafted sword into the trunk of this tree and they make like a little tunnel by moving it back and forth like that with sharp little ends you can see her working her abdomen moving that back and forth and then she'll make like a little tunnel and then lay a little row of eggs in the tunnel and then move on. She'll go back up and do it again. She'll make another little tunnel and then go back up and do it again. And then she'll go to another branch until she lays all of her eggs. After the cicadas are gone this spring, you can go out to the trees where you heard them and you'll see these things all over the trees. It usually doesn't really do a whole lot of damage to big mature trees sometimes the branch itself will die and you'll see it sort of hanging with brown leaves and they call that flagging because it looks like it's hanging like a flag and sometimes there'll be a lot of that after after brood 10 go out and look and you'll see a lot of that on the trees but really it ends up being more like pruning trees the only time they're dangerous to trees is if uh like if you have young trees in your yard that you pay a lot of money for or something if you see cicadas around there you might want to put some netting over them just for the couple of weeks that the cicadas are around and then that'll keep them from <laughs> doing that to your trees that's how they lay their eggs and then in a few weeks the babies will hatch out they'll be like little teeny tiny rice sized termite like things they'll literally drop from the branch 
they're small enough that they won't get hurt when they fall. They'll tunnel underground and they'll stay there until 2021 and it's 2038. Where are you going to be in 2038? Hopefully I'm going to be shooting these guys again, but they're going to be under there for that long. And so when the spring has gotten warm enough that the soil temperature reaches 64 degrees, that's something that the nymphs can feel. And that's a cue that they use to know there's probably not going to be a late night frost and the adults are going to be able to get through their life cycle without freezing to death. They'll climb out of their tunnel for the last time and then find the nearest vertical surface they go straight up. That's their instinct to go straight up. And they'll go up anything. It's usually a tree. And in nature, it's almost always a tree. But it could be a telephone pole or a bush or a fence or a bush. Or it could be a house or it could be your dog or a blade of grass or a fence post. Except your dog would move too much. But it could be a fence post or it could be a bush. It could be your grandma. It could be you, but it could be you. Or it could be you. You stand there long enough and they'll climb up your leg and hang on you. And uh, it takes like an hour or so for them to do this. But if you want to do it, they'll do it right on you. They don't care. Wherever they can get a good grip. And you can see that not only are their front fossorial legs perfectly designed to dig, they're also perfect for holding on to the side of the tree. They hold on really well because then their back splits open and they push themselves out and the shell doesn't fall off. It holds on the same time. And you can actually take one of those shells and real gently lift it up, trying not to break the legs. And then if you get it off right, you can just hang it on your shirt. So then they got to pull out and you can see it's white and they got shriveled up little wings. And then what happens is they grow or they, they pull themselves out and then it takes an hour or two and then they turn black, their wings turn orange, and then they're adults and then they go find a mate. So the males make all the noise that you hear and then the females find them. They have a little back and forth and then they're ready to go lay eggs. <laughs> a little back and forth. That's what they call it back home. This video is of a mating pair from Brood 10. Today is May 17th. There aren't any mating pairs from Brood 10 right now. This is a mating pair from Blendon Woods, which is in Columbus, just the north side of Columbus. But in 2004, these guys were the parents of this year's Brood 10. 2004 to 2021. So these are the parents of the brood 10 that's going to come up this year. And you can see, I didn't really get the greatest video of them. It's cool to have video of a mating pair, but you can tell it was on kind of a rainy day, and I didn't really spend enough time out there, and blah 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 blah. blah. Although I did get, <laughs> I did get this right here, and this is uh, them walking on my hand. This wasn't the first time I ever saw brood 10. I also saw them in 1987. These are the grandparents of the ones that are going to come up this year. And back then, I didn't have any video at all. I was at Ohio State back then and actually cut class one morning to get up and do this. And I didn't realize how long it took, so I had to sit there forever to get the photos of it coming out of a taste. And I mean, you can see that the quality is only sort of okay, but that was. 34 years ago. This was at Muirfield at the golf course, believe it or not. Well, this was right near the golf course. And this was in 1987. And I was fortunate enough that year to get invited to a practice round at the Memorial Golf Tournament. But it was so weird because it was the year of the cicadas and they were the story the whole time. You could stand in the gallery and talk just like a normal person because they were so loud. Usually I know all you golf fans know you have to whisper when you're in the gallery at a golf tournament so you don't disturb the golfers. But this was on on uh, the television broadcast. Their opening shots coming back from commercials and stuff was a close-up of one of the cicadas because that was the whole story. Of course, 1987, when their parents came up, I don't have any <laughs> media of that. I wish I did. In 1970, there wasn't a golf course there. It was all woods. And so these guys were coming up. They had been laid in trees that were gone, and they were coming up all over the place. And it was quite a phenomenon. This year, though, Brood 10 is on the western part of Ohio. And you can see from the big map, it's also in other places. 
Uh, actually, if you want to just see Brood 10, Brood 10 is all these little blue dots. You can see some of it overlaps with where Brood 2 is, but these are on a different cycle than Brood 2. And so there's overlaps, not a whole lot, but there are overlaps, especially on the edges. One of the things that's really interesting about all this is that, it, 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 okay, it's 2021, right? The last time Brood 10 was up was 2004. 2004, we didn't have such great GPS in our phones. We didn't have real convenient long battery laptops we could drive around with. Now the researchers who are out there can just drive around where they know the brood exists and they can have their windows open and look at their and then push the data in their keyboard. And you can tell by the calls which species it is. And so every year these guys come up in a particular area, the technology is so much better that they can refine the edges of the different broods much better. Also, this year, if you want to get involved, you can go to the site cicadasafari.org and you can enter in data yourself and help them figure out where brood X actually exists. The other thing about this is in 2004, they couldn't do with DNA what they can do with DNA now. And when they were up before that in 1987, I mean, the ability to actually measure a genome and all that, the Human Genome Project hadn't happened. They hadn't discovered CRISPR yet. You know, CRISPR is the thing that lets you use DNA like Legos and they can figure out all kinds of stuff. CRISPR, CRISPR by the way, clustered, right? Clustered regularly, interspaced, short palindromic repeats. Anyway, very complicated DNA research that they didn't have in 2004. So now when they can do DNA analyses of brood 10, they're going to have a much better understanding of the divisions in species and start to gain better insights of how the evolution of such a bizarre life cycle ever happened in the first place. And you can get involved too. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. That's how cool. But I certainly have found where there are just a gazillion calling adults and flying around and here's one right here climbing up this blade of grass. I don't know, can you see him? He's right there. There's a bunch of empty shells over here. This is another one right, let's see, oh uh, wait, Ooh, that's poison ivy, watch out for that. There's one right there, can you see that? And uh, there's one right there. Okay. I'm going to go get some shots of these guys, but if you can get out here, you should. If not, come back in 2033 and they'll be back.